sins of the flesh, and the entire assembled shock cream and fan community of the world. Thank you so much for coming here today. Please. <laughs> Tell me, Cliff, I think our microphones are both hot there. Maybe uh, you could tell me, Cliff, when the... Uh... Hello. Hello! I love you, Jessica! I love you, too. Thank you. Talk later. Could you tell us when the last time you saw each other was? When did we stop shooting? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was the You were doing all those Woody Allen movies, and you had like a film in the movie star. We haven't seen each other since the 80s, before you guys were even in the Oh, that's right. Now you were born. Yes. Some of you folks will indulge me for a second. I'm not too embarrassed, but I do want to give a brief biography of some fantastic, impressive career details you may not know about. Jessica is the star of over 20 major motion pictures, including Stardust Cameras, Pennies from Heaven, my favorite year, Minority Report, Phantom of the Paradise. Seven CDs of children's music, eleven books for children, and they're award-winning. And her new uh, blog is coming out with a book in October called The Crabby Cook, and that goes to the press. We it's a fantastic you, video blog. Woo! You can see all about it at JessicaHarper.com. Let me tell you a little bit about Cliff. They're both rock stars, but yes. Cliff was the star of Clear Light in the 1960s. A fantastic. Woo! Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin. Cliff is the star of over 80 features and countless television shows, including Glory, The Craft, The Hunger, FX, Carter Swift, and Flight of the Navigator. <laughs> See, let me ask you, 30 years later, how does it feel to know Shock Treatment is reaching a larger audience than ever before through the DVD and live streams? Are, are you surprised? Are you pleased? I'm, yeah. I'm very surprised. I mean, when it seems when we did the film, nobody was paying much attention. You know, what sort of writing to be my play and things, and, uh, and I said, geez, all of a sudden, you know, are all you people just from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and then you got bored and came over? <laughs> the shock treatment? These are shockers, man. Are shockers? <laughs> I'm surprised to be sitting here, period. <laughs> All those years. But, uh, yes, I mean, I never, if someone told me, you know, in 2010, on September 24th, you're going to be sitting in a chair in front of 400 people talking about shock treatment, I would have said, oh, are you smoking? <laughs> we'll come back to that later. <laughs> so, I, I have some questions I'm going to get right into it because we're so excited to have you. Talk about the casting. And can we keep it back, uh, quiet down there? We've got some special people on stage. A little respect, please. Um, were the two of you cast together? Uh, I'm curious how you came to the project and a little bit about how you knew each other in advance of this. I had known uh, Jim Sharman, who directed the Rocky Horror Picture Show. We did a play off Broadway called The Trials of Oz. It was about a magazine that was busted for pornography in Australia, so we did that. And then when uh, Rocky, the Rocky Horror Picture Show came out, Jim called me and said, you know, Brad and I was doing a series and didn't do it. Which, you know, which is a good thing because the guy that did it was pretty cool. So Jim actually called you and offered you the role? Yes, sir. Wow. And uh, I was doing a, a series called Sunshine at the time in the 70s. Sunshine! <laughs> <laughs> he was great, that guy who found me in the That's awesome. So then when the, ne when the next one came out, uh, Jim called me again and said, could we do you know, this one? And I thought Jessica Harper was already cast, and that sounded like good, a good idea to me. Jessica, will you tell us a little bit about how you came to the project? Uh, so you two were cast together as a, as a pair. You were cast in the Michigan and found out later that you were both on the show. I don't really remember. I do know, I do remember auditioning though, it was at the Roxy, 
wasn't it? Yeah, it was at the Roxy. We came in the same Roxy, you guys know, on Sunset, they made us get up on stage and sing and rock mm -hmm. and act like we knew what we were doing. And I fooled them and I got the mm -hmm. <laughs> And there was an actor's strike. We were going to go to Denton, Texas, the actual town. Do it! Do it! You know, and shoot real, uh, real exteriors and real stuff. And then there was an actor's strike and nobody could do that. So we had to go shoot it all in a... In a studio in some place, London. Boo hoo, we had to go to London. Yeah, it was a couple months instead of Texas. Yeah. What a trade off, huh? <laughs> now I understand the two of you knew each other, though, before soccer. We did hair together. We were in hair on Broadway. Now, since you were on Broadway together, I mean, you're both very strong with the background as seasoned actors and rock singers. I'm curious, I, I think we'd all be interested to know how you approached uh, your roles and characters with, with this movie. And just to set it up a little, Cliff, you had a unique challenge playing two parts. I'm curious about your process, particularly approaching the dual duet. Well, it was great. I mean, the dual duet, everybody went home, and it was just me and me on the set. And Jim Sherman, you know, in the morning I played Brad, and in the afternoon I played Farley, and we just kind of went crazy. And we did it a couple of times where it was very kind of uh, okay, but it wasn't. And then Jim said, no, it's got to be crazy. It's got to get really wacky. So we, you know, we tried to get as far out as we could, and I was very happy with how it turned out. Just if you had already once starred as a as a, a stellar rock diva, of course, in Phantom of Paradise. Woo! Which we all love. And I'm curious uh, how your approach to Janet was similar or different as a character and a process as your approach to Phoenix. You know, now that you mention it, isn't it incredible? It never occurs to me until now. These characters were similar because they both went through a transition. Duh. I mean, they, you know, they both started out all, and then they both ended up kind of uh, diva-ish and crabby. Well, you got pretty dark there with that. I got dark. Looking for trade and that weird whole thing. <laughs> I'd like to mention um, the obvious, of course. You were both assuming characters that were already made famous by other actors. Now, did this affect your characterization? Or did it well, you know, it was, yeah, it was hard because it, it, all everybody loved uh, Susan and uh, the other guy. And the, <laughs> <laughs> the screen guy! The screen guy! What's his name? The screen guy! Yeah, that guy. Uh, <laughs> it's very difficult because you come in and everybody loves that, so you just kind of go for it. It's, it's a wonderful thing. And Richard O'Brien and Richard Hartley just said, you know, let's, uh, let's just go crazy here. And because we weren't in Texas, because we were in such an enclosed space on that little studio in London, I think it was, you know, we got to be, um, you know, we came up with some good stuff and we stopped worrying about that. Farley I had no trouble with because that was just, you know, from the, from outer space, that guy. <laughs> but, you know, Brad, it was tough because it was a hard act to follow. Well, I was lucky. I was able to do a telephone interview with Cliff uh, in advance of the convention. And Cliff, you told me, which I didn't know, you recorded the soundtrack at the world famous Abbey Road Studios in London. Um, yeah. as in the I was, I was, it was very. It was kind of a movie don't remember. I remember it was Abbey Road. Thing. I'm sorry. I'm just, no, no. I'm just curious about the. Right section. outside the studio, there were these four guys walking across the street. <laughs> I went back and forth. I'm, uh, I'm curious about coming into this process, you know, the second film in this series. How did the RHPS actors and creative team treat you? I mean, did you feel welcome and embraced? I, I do want to mention, uh, Barry Boston has mentioned that he felt a little bit of an outsider at the American there on the set. Uh, what was your experience working with the creative and the actors? Um. <laughs> did you feel welcome or did you feel kind of like an outsider? I thought it was great. I mean, we went to Sunday lunch and we went to Richard's house yeah, and we had parties and things. So I mean, like, I was also, by the way, speaking of following footsteps, so I was following 
What's her name again? <laughs> the screen. But we are not competitive with our predecessors at all. No, we just think we're better than them. <laughs> <laughs> O'Brien and Pat Quinn and Mel. Mel is just the best. You know, they're all kind of weird. <laughs> but in the best way, you guys would love these people. Yeah. We already do it. I'm curious, I'm going to set this up a little bit. About which colleagues, uh, on any end of it, from the technical to the acting, would you remember the most fondly? Any well, for me, it's, for me, it's Barry Humphreys because we became Barry friends. Humphreys. We've been friends for 30 years, and it all stemmed from that. For some reason, Barry and I, and his former wife and mine, got on really well. And whenever he's in LA, he comes here. And you know, I've seen Dame Edna so many times. You invite me next time. Yes, I will. He called me up. Jeez, I've seen Dame Edna so many times. I'm sick of it. But Barry's a good guy, and, uh, <laughs> and so we got on very well. At least. His birch schnick was uh, pretty, pretty eccentric, I thought. Yeah. He's the most elegant man. You wouldn't believe it from the way he behaves publicly. But he's very, he's this English gentleman who serves Stilton cheese with a silver knife. You know, he's very... Well, I, you know, my, my mother came to visit us. In, my mother came to London to visit us when we were doing shop treatment. And I told the cast. So they had a Sunday lunch for my mother. You know, Richard O'Brien and all the cast came to this little restaurant and my little old lady mother was sitting there saying, well, you know, so this was a very kind thing that they did. Uh, she was, she didn't say a word because she was afraid of these people. <laughs> but it was a nice thing to do anyway. You can't imagine why. I want to, this dovetails into Barry Humphreys. Now, a lot of us uh, were fortunate to meet Patricia Quinn two years ago in Atlantic City. <laughs> fantastic Rocky Shaggy convention. Now, Pat told me that Barry Humphreys looked at her one day in the dressing room for the shoot and said, do you have any idea what we're shooting here? <laughs> I, 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 any idea on earth what this is about? And I, I kind of asked the two for such a conceptual and unusual film story scenario. Was that a common thing for the actors that kind of like, I'm not quite sure what it's all about? I was completely bewildered, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell I was doing. But I had a feeling it was, I, I love the music. And I, I thought, and it had such great energy, and I love the squeaky clean look of the sets. And so I thought, well, I'm not exactly sure where this is going, but it looks kind of interesting. It wasn't the kind of a thing that you could do the method, method, you know, research for. You just kind of show up and, and uh, hope for the best. The, the fun thing was, all those people in the audience, you know, the audience was a big part of those people there. They were all very interesting. I mean, you'd sit up there with them and you'd talk and have conversations and these people in the Royal Dramatic Academy of Wars or whatever it is. I mean, I, I found a lot of those people. Well, maybe I was bored and had to talk to somebody. <laughs> now, I'd like to direct this to both of you, but I'd like to start with Jessica now. Let me say, I think often a serious work of art is overlooked at first. And of course, shock you've ever seen a mixed reaction from the Rocky Horror fans and from the critics. Even out for people out there today, most of us, I would like to think love it. Some people don't. I'm curious your honest feelings on your participation and experience with the project and the final product, how you feel about it and as a Sean, are you as a How I feel about chapter again? Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, um, I, you know, I love, I love making the movie. I haven't, to be honest with you, I haven't seen it in a really long time. Yes. I, I, know, I should have seen it yesterday or something. So I, you can see I it today. Maybe I would know, remember something if I had seen it yesterday. So I don't know how much I'd like it today because I haven't seen it in a while. But at the time, I thought it was really fun. And I just loved doing it so much. Cliff was so fabulous and everybody. So I just kind of have a kind of fondness for it, regardless of what I would think if I actually saw it. <laughs> I always say that, you know, if you're having too much fun making a movie, it's probably not going to turn out very well. And we had so much fun making this movie. And I said, oh, you know, I don't, you know, what, whatever happened, it was a, it was, it was a, a, a good time by all. And when I was when we were shooting there, we all had our little dressing rooms, you know, Cliff Dio, and, uh, and uh, there was a movie of mine on TV in London, on, uh, and and in the uh, TV 
guy, they call it, or something. He says, and someone named Cliff D. Young, a story and a thing and a thing. And I said, oh, that's okay. And the next morning when I came to work, above it, on my door, there was a little letters, someone named Cliff D. Young. <laughs> I remember that. Too. And I Finally, thought, I remember I thought, should, should I be touched by this or angry? I couldn't believe it. Now, if I could get heavy for a second. Um, I've spoken to some of the, the minor bit players from Shock Treatment, and very much like Rocky Horror, uh, in addition to blues, I've heard firsthand about a fair amount of pot smoking on set and harder things. Uh, and now, without naming any names, do you recall anything like that? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> In American studios, at lunchtime, there are no bars. You can't go. You can go eat, but they don't want you drinking because when you come back after lunch. In, in London, at lunch, everybody went to a bar, and they all had a bunch of beers. By the time they got back, they were all kind of, you know, wobbly. And, uh, so and then at 4 o'clock, they reel in the tea cart, and everybody has tea. Now, this is a, a serious question. I mean, not for personal selfish reasons, but... Have either of you ever seen a Rocky Horror Picture Show live shadow cast presented on stage? Yes. Yeah! Ooh, all right. uh, you know, the, the, uh, it used to be out at, uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard by the freeway. Yeah. 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 This was early on. Yeah. And, and uh, Richard O'Brien was very interested in all this stuff. You know, he kept asking, oh, yeah, have you seen this? I mean, is the Rocky Horror Picture Show pretty good, huh? He said, yes, Richard, very good. I had to pat him on the head and tell him how much he loved Rocky Horror Picture Show. Now, uh, on a more serious note, have either of you ever seen a shock treatment fully staged shadow cast? No, no, I haven't. Well, uh, not to put you on the spot, we are inviting you to stay and see some of it because we're doing it tonight. This is a fantastic venue. We've got a, an unbelievable cast, people who love you, and, and we're really going to try and do it. Please find Rocky Horror legend Larry Bizell right there. Big call, okay? um, or Kev JB. Kev JB right up here. Kev's going to take that side. Larry's going to take the house right side. You can also flag me down as well. So without further ado, who's got some questions for Cliff and Jessica? I got one right here. Okay. Are you enjoying your beers? No, no, it's just 
terrible, but I think I'll have another. Can we get another one up there, please? I'm drinking water. <laughs> Just, but I might move on to beer very soon. <laughs> Have you guys um, ever met or talked with Susan Sarandon or Barry Bossing? Yes, I did a movie with her called The Hunger. <laughs> and she, uh, I asked her about the Rocky Horror Picture Show because I thought she said, "Well, it seems to me that we uh, Barry Bossing and I spent a couple of weeks standing around in our underwear." So. <laughs> I'm so glad that shock treatment didn't involve standing around in your underwear. <laughs> I have another question, please. Larry, Larry's got a question. Larry. Uh, yes, my question is, you both have very distinctive styles of voice, and um, I'm interested in how you kind of developed your own, um, like, you have your, you, everybody has their own voices, but how do you develop the voice for either the character or just your own distinctive voice in general? Well, I don't know if you have a lot of choice. You know, you're born with a voice, and you work with what you, you play the cards you're dealt, and uh, you just hope hope for the best. I mean, my, my background in singing was always rock and roll, so I can't do any of that other stuff except, you know, kind of belt it out like that. And uh, you know, Jessica's got a very refined voice. You always did. Did you sing a solo in here? You sang. Yeah, I understudied the two leads, so I would jump in. I sang. I'm in a boy called Frank. Jessica, do you have any memories about working with Dario or Gentum and Suspiria? You know, I was going to ask, I'm glad you asked that. I was going to ask for that question. Suspiria! Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh. Um, oh, yes, I have lots of memories. Was there any particular memory about Does you? Have <laughs> Does he have an accent? <laughs> Not Jessica, I want to do it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he was really Italian. Oh, man, is he ever Italian? <laughs> His English wasn't even so great, so, uh, very Italian, very, and, what? No, I, I think it's interesting, it's kind sorry, of, it's Jessica, don't you think, I'm almost seeing a little similarity between your character in Suspiria as well as Phoenix and Janet in terms of the, the wholesome girl thrown into this crazy environment. Well, that's true, and in all those cases, I do kind of freak out at the end. And this is very, I was lucky enough to kill a nine-year-old witch. <laughs> that was wild. They hired this hooker to play the witch. I'm not kidding. Dario told me she was a she was a literally she was 98 years old and she was an ex hooker. I'm assuming not a current hooker. <laughs> Anyway, and I had to stab her in the neck. I don't know if you guys remember that scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was some... Hey guys. Um, every five or ten years, most of the people in this room know this, we hear a fresh round of Rocky sequel rumors. And one particular rumor I remember hearing in the late 80s, early 90s, was there is going to be yet another follow-up to Rocky Horror, and that one or both of you were top of the list for the leads. Um, wondering if that ever got as far as you guys hearing about it or not. I never heard about it. I mean, I, mean, I talk to Richard O'Brien occasionally. Well, not for the last. Yeah, I think he sort of went crazy, but he's still a great guy. <laughs> Uh, he, never, he never mentioned it. He was doing stuff in London, you know, on the West End and musicals and all of that stuff. And uh, so I have never heard of that. And, and he would have told me, I think. I'm hearing it for the first time right now. Other questions, please? Yes, we have one here. Uh, over here. Yes, uh, this, uh, this is for Jessica, right here. Uh, uh, apart from the stuff that you've written yourself naturally, uh, what is the most favorite thing you've ever been able to sing? Ooh. Oh. I, I don't know if I could pick one. Maybe top three? <laughs> I, I love, I have to say, I, re I love saying that. Slip into the. Yeah! Lullaby! 
that, I love that song. There's something about that that I just adored singing. And this, which one? Slip into the crystal deep. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, all right. And and uh, there's a song in Phantom of the Paradise. That <laughs> You know, I was understudying the lead in hair for a long time. Alan Nichols, a good friend. And then one night he said, you're going on. You know, you're going on the lead in hair on Broadway. There's going to be a bunch of people here. It was very kind of nerve-wracking. And, uh, but it seemed to go all right. So it's, it, you know, it's fun standing center, singing a song with however many 800 people there on Broadway. Because suddenly you feel, you know, my mother was wrong. I, sh I should have become an actor. Cliff, can you sing something? Woo! Please be respectful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sunshine! Oh, okay. Someone else. <laughs> that one here? Yeah, After the second beer, but see, now you made me conscious of drinking beer, now I'm afraid to. See? <laughs> 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 I 
like this movie called Stardust Memories that I was in. I really like that one. Jessica, I wanted to ask you, did you make another musical the same year as Shark Treatment in 1981? Was it Pennies from Heaven? Or yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it was sort of a musical, but people lip sucked. Same as <laughs> Well, don't think we always lip sync to movie musical, no? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, no, I mean, I mean, we sang um, other people's, oh, oh, right. they played old recordings of people singing songs and we lips, we were lip syncing, we, was, we were lip syncing, but it wasn't our voices, it was the actual voices from the 1930s recordings that we were, so it's a very odd, it's hard to explain. Odd. I remember going to a party at John Goldstone's when we were there doing shock treatment and being very excited because there was a couple of the Monty Python, you know, guys, Michael Palin and Eric <laughs> It's like having brunch with the Beatles, man. I was totally knocked out by these guys. Uh, uh oh. We're getting the hook. Oh, no, no, no. We're just uh, setting up. We have a couple of photo ops we want before we move on to the next thing. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions. I, I'm sure there are things burning out there. I've got, I've got one right over here. Thank you both very much for coming. To your left. Uh, you go to the left. Uh, Will we ever see Jessica performing live again? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I maybe. I, I, I don't know. I, you never know. <laughs> Haven't you done some music? If I have a couple more beers, it could happen very soon. <laughs> open, uh, hey, bar man, open bar for Jessica Harper right here. Open bar right there, whatever she wants. <laughs> now, Jessica, you have done some music videos of your own music, though, haven't you? Uh, the children's music you composed? Oh, they're just some performance videos that are uh, sort of up there on YouTube, but not real ones. I mean, you know, not... Uh, are you, you're in them singing? I am. Oh. Yay! Little children songs? Happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going on in Nora's room! Oh, you got it! <laughs> Question from Lara, please. Do you have any um, leftovers from when you were filming Child Trip? Uh, any photos from the set or memorabilia that you have? Anything Larry can have? Anything like that? Mm -hmm. well, I, did, I, I sent a lot of stuff to the site. I mean, I put up some pictures of Richard O'Brien and me backstage and all of that stuff. I mean, I posted them. And uh, memorabilia, I think I still have the glasses somewhere. I found them in one of our movies. In fact, I was looking for them to bring them here, but who knows? I wish I had some. Farley's bow tie. Yes. I'd love to get my hands on that hat. That lovely. <laughs> lovely hat. You, the the hat. you happen to be in the presence of some of the most talented costume makers in the world here. You're going to see that hat tonight. I'm so excited I saw a phantom helmet. I can't wait to see the black hat. <laughs> Do we have oh, I think we have time for two more questions. Two more questions. Two more questions. Kevin Larry. Sorry about that. I have a question right over here. Here we go. For both of you, what is your ultimate dream role? She's a <laughs> I, I think I've had mine already, and uh, mostly in, in films like Glory and yeah. Flash, you know, uh, Sometimes when you're sitting on a horse and you look around and you see Morgan Freeman over there and Denzel Washington over there, and you know, you think, holy smoke. When I was a kid, I used to you know, dream about being on a horse with 500 people and a couple of movie stars, and so I guess this is a good thing. As of now, you know, whoever calls and says uh, and makes me an offer, I seriously consider it. We're so happy you're here today, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, uh... we need... Jessica, do you have a... A dream role? Uh... I... Let's play Meryl Streep in the biopic, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my dream role is one that 
pays me $20 million. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say. I feel like I've been really lucky. I've really done some really fun things. And like Cliff said, you know, you're staring into Peter O'Toole's eyes and figure, okay, I've had a dream roll. <laughs> and if another one comes along, uh, they take all kinds of different forms, dream rolls, so we'll see. One more, one more, please. All right. Looks like we've got it. Ladies and gentlemen, put the young and the So folks, give us just a few minutes to get set up for, uh, for autographs and whatnot. Give them a break and we'll get rolling in just a minute. Please uh, spend some time at Larry's.